Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be factoring a nice polynomial with 15th degree. Is it um, quinty, that's six something? I don't know. I forgot the name of it, but we have this polynomial, one plus x plus x squared, dot, 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 all the way up to including x to the 15th power, and we're gonna factor this polynomial. And I'll be presenting two methods, but guess what? The first method comes from the second method. But I'm going to do the first method first because it's kind of a little bit more painful. And it's hard to see, but if you do the second method, you're going to realize what I'm talking about. Okay? So stick around and make sure you see both methods. And then also let me know what you think about these methods. All right, let's get started. First of all, where does this problem come from? I did not come up with the idea. And I'd like to thank Professor Ignacio on Twitter or x for this beautiful problem i'm also going to share his information so you can definitely follow because he's got a lot of good problems uh, on his page and you can definitely check it out all right great let's see how we can go ahead and solve a problem like this so we have one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed i could write all the terms but you don't really need to know because you know that it's going to go all the way up to and including x to the power 15. So we need to factor this. It's a really long polynomial with 16 terms, including one. And how do we factor it, right? That's a good question. So when I saw this problem, I'm like, aha, uh -huh, there's a way to do it. And then I realized, okay, there is another way to do it, which was supposed to be the second method. But guess what? I switched them around because the first method is supposed to be a little bit more painful and more brute forcey. That's what, how I usually do things. Okay, so let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to split this polynomial into groups. And the way I do that is going to be uh, depending on the powers. And I'm going to be using some type of modular arithmetic here. Let me tell you what I mean. If you look at these powers, there are 16 different powers, including x to the power 0. So we can kind of split these powers into four groups uh, using mod 4. In other words, numbers that are multiples of 4, numbers that leave a remainder of 1. In other words, numbers that are 1 mod 4, 2 mod 4, and 3 mod 4. Of course, 3 mod 4 is the same as negative 1, so you can look at it both ways. So here's what I mean in plain terms. I'm going to split up into like this, 1 plus x to the 4th plus x to the 8th plus x to the power 12th. Notice that all these powers have something in common. They're all multiples of 4. 0 is a multiple of 4 too, right? You agree with that? Hopefully. And then I'm just going to increase by 1. In other words, I multiply everything by x, which is going to give me uh, powers that are 1 more than a multiple of 4. In other words, 1 mod 4. So they're going to be x, x to the 5th, x to the 9th, and x to the power 13. You get the idea? And increase powers one more time. x squared, x to the 6th, x to the 10th, plus x to the power 14. This way, you're not hitting the same power twice because there's 16 of them and there's four distinct groups, maybe like a partition sort of stuff. That way you're not repeating anything. And then x to the third, x to the seventh, x to the eleventh, and x to the power 15. The way they are, because they're partitioned, the reason being that those form the equivalence classes. Anyways, that's a different topic. We're not going to get into the depth of the number theoretic look, but we're just going to do it very algebraically, okay? So, I split it up into four groups, but so what? What are you going to do next? I'm going to do the following. I'll find a common factor. Wait a minute. There's no common factor for the first one. There is. It's one. When there's no common factor, don't forget, there's always one. Is that going to be helpful? Absolutely. Now, let's take a look at the second row, which has a common factor of x. And remember, these are 1 mod 4. So when you take one of the powers out, what do you get inside? 0 mod 4, right? So you get the same thing. Awesome. And then here, you take out x squared and guess what? Inside the parentheses, we have the same thing, which is really cool. And then this time we're going to do the x cubed. And hopefully you get the idea by now. And here we go. By grouping them into four different groups and separating kind of like in a smart way, right? You have to be really careful about it. We were able to find a common factor. If you did it differently, like if you took the first four terms, it wouldn't help you, would it? 
Probably not. Maybe it would. Who knows? I'm just guessing. Now we're going to go ahead and add these up because when we add them all up, it's going to give us our polynomial. But now we have a common factor. 1 plus x to the 4th plus x to the 8th plus x to the 12th. By the way, I think there's more than one way to do the first method. But I'm going to leave it to you. So once you take that out, these are going to be the terms uh, of the second factor. So it's going to look like this. Make sense? So when you distribute this, you can check it out. You, will be, you should be getting the original expression. Make sure to do that because this is kind of binary sort of stuff. You don't get the same thing twice, which is really cool, right? So now, this also kind of reminds me some type of generating function maybe. I don't know. Th these topics are all inter intertwined and I don't really want to get into depth. I want to focus on this. So what is the next thing? The next thing is within each group, I want to factor by grouping again because it's possible. Take a look. This is 1 plus x to the 4th, and here we have x to the 8th as a common factor. And if you take out x to the 8th, you get 1 plus x to the 4th, which is really cool, isn't it? And here we have 1 plus x, and then take out x squared, you'll get 1 plus x again. So now, this is 1 times 1 plus x to the 4th, even though I didn't write it, hopefully uh, you can tell. Uh, 1 plus x to the 4th will be multiplied by 1 plus x to the 8th. And here, 1 plus x is a common factor, but it's multiplied by 1. Remember, just try to visualize that. 1 plus x times 1 plus x squared will be the other factor. So put it all together. Maybe move these closer a little bit, right? So that it looks like they're factors of the same thing. Make sense? So now, this is basically fully factored. You know why? Because none of these can be factored. These are sum of squares. Unless you use complex numbers, well, we're going to keep it real, for real. Okay, so this is basically the first method, and let's go ahead and talk about the second method, which I believe is more elegant, but you'll get to decide, okay? I don't want to be biased, so you'll get to decide which method you like better. So the second method, I think, is uh, depends on the sum of a geometric series. You hopefully know that whenever you have something like 1 plus r plus r squared, dot, 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 r to the power n minus 1. This is 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. The reason why we don't finish with r to the n instead of, uh, why, do, why do we finish with r to the power n minus 1? Because we want n terms. That's important. The number of terms is n. Makes sense? But if you end up with r to the n, then this is going to be r to the power n plus 1, which is just one more than the highest power. Same idea. So this is your formula. Let's apply it here. Uh, r would be x. So 1 plus x plus x squared dot dot dot, I don't even need to write uh, x to the third, is going to be 1 minus x to the power 16 divided by 1 minus x. Wait a minute. I thought you were trying to factor it. This is not factored. Wait a minute. We're not done yet. We're going to factor it. You know how? This is difference of two squares. One more time. Professor Ignacio, thank you very much for this problem. I think it's a beautiful problem. So how do you factor 1 minus x to the 16th? Well, first of all, you can kind of write it as 1 minus x to the 8th, times 1 plus x to the 8th because of difference of 2 squares, x to the 16th, right? And then, uh-oh, this is a difference of 2 squares again. Let's do it one more time. 1 plus x to the 8th is just going to stay there, right? And then we'll factor this because this is still a difference of 2 squares. See how, see how this problem dissolves nicely every time you get an extra factor until you hit 1 minus x and 1 plus x, and that's it. You don't want to go into radicals. That's where we're going to stop because notice that we have 1 minus x in the denominator. So what happens if you take this expression and divide it by 1 minus x, right? This expression, take that. This is our uh, polynomial in factored form, right? But of course, there's a denominator. Remember, that's part of the problem. And now these two are going to cancel out, leaving us with the answer nice and clean. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and keep watching. Bye-bye.